These paddocks, 60 kilometres north of Esperance, have been transformed by soil amelioration. What was typical Western Australian flat mallee country, producing around two tonne to the hectare cereal crops, is now delivering double those yields. We've traded around 700 hectares so far on the farm and we've still got probably around five to 600 hectares to do, maybe more. When finished, it will mean about a third of Gavin's 3,400 hectare property will have had a soil amelioration treatment. On a property like Gavin's in the medium rainfall zone, the, the main constraints were uh, non-wetting and um, soil compaction. So you know, they were uh, identified by, by Gavin and then we did some um, ground truthing work using EM and radiometrics and just purely digging holes to work out what was going on and then we developed strategies around that to, to address those probably two key issues. The strategy was to delve and rip the soils to break the compaction and bring clay to the surface. What those um, analytics told us was that, um, you know, it gave us a fair, a fair idea of um, depth to clay. So then we could uh, zone out um, the paddocks and where the, where the clay was quite deep, then we'd use clay spreading as the amelioration uh, method. And where the clay was shallow enough to the surface, we'd use delving as the, as the method to, uh, to bring clay to the surface. Topsoil that was 99% sand now has 5% clay mixed into it. pH has risen as well as potassium levels. According to consultant Quentin Knight, the cereal yield increases have been phenomenal. So when I talk about phenomenal, you know, we were seeing yield increases of um, probably nearly, you know, 100%. So, you know, from country that was maybe only producing uh, two tonne of cereals now, that's got up to the point where it uh, regularly produces up to four tonne. The Egan's improved yields have come with some consequences, such as needing a revised farming strategy. One of the challenges with doing this is, is getting the seed in at the right depths and we've got a parallelogram seeder, uh, so the press wheel's on the, on the tine and as long as we run that with low enough pressure we, we seem to manage to, to still get a 90% job of what we'd expect on untouched country. Another consequence of disturbing the soil and covering stubble is exposure to wind erosion. It's a risk Gavin Egan has minimised by monitoring soil moisture levels and being selective about sowing times. That's been our main, main issue is if we get a blow after seeding and, and fill the furrows. That, but that's only happened you know, on small areas a couple of times, so not the whole area that we've been doing. Below the soil surface, there are other needs to satisfy. So as we started to increase our yield potential, Obviously we had to um, you know, re readdress our um, nutrition package because you know, once we're feeding for a two, two and a half tonne crop, now we've got to start feeding for a three and a half to four tonne or, or better crop. So you know, it's, a, it's a continually evolving thing and as our production levels increase, our agronomy around that whole system needs to continually change. Quentin and Gavin are working on herbicide strategies as well. Post amelioration, we get um, you know, good consistent germinations of weeds. Our knockdowns are effective, um, and our pre-emergent herbicides are a whole lot more effective because they're operating in, um, in soil moisture where you know, previously they weren't. Gavin Egan's soil amelioration program started seven years ago. Now he believes he's drought-proofed a lot of his farm and given himself options. What we do know now is that we can seed earlier with longer season varieties that will yield more in this Esperance area. The soil health is better. The, the earthworms are there and increasing again now that, that we, we fixed the non-wetting issue. And these areas that we've been targeting uh, in a dry type year, we've been struggling to get a, to get a yield of grain off. Whereas now it's as, as good as, if not better than than our good country and we just know we, we can produce grain each year, which is a real bonus. With Gavin Egan's experience at one end and the R&D generated by the Soil Constraints West program run by WA's Department of Primary Industries and Regional Development at the other end, a lot of benefit has come from GRDC's investment in soil amelioration. Somewhere in between, there's the promise of gain for all grain growers, according to consultant Quentin Knight. 
The real proof will be the adoption on farm. So we're seeing that as, as every year goes by, more and more growers are gaining confidence in, uh, in the research that's uh, been getting done. And um, ultimately it's making their businesses uh, more profitable and more resilient. Go to the description bar below for the latest information, links and resources.